今天呢，我们来到一家，也是一家新的咖啡店，应该是今年年初才开业的。那么这家呢，就在位于这个街角，叫做 Push and Pull。我们一会儿进去看一看吧。好，待会呢，我就去采访这家店的老板，但是他呢也兼这个店的烘焙师，呃 ，Christopher。然后让我们来听听他关于这家店以及他对这些产品的选择是怎么解说的。Okay, so I remember that you used to to do the pop up before. So I'm wondering what what brought you to start your own coffee shop. I mean, a, a real coffee shop like this、yeah. one, like this one. So did you think you are ready at that at at that moment? I was selling bags to friends out of my living room,、uh-huh. and then we started doing pop-ups for other businesses. And、uh, the reactions and the responses that we got about the product that we were making and the brand that we were forming were all very positive. And I had desired to open a coffee shop from the time that I was 18. And so the feedback that we were getting from friends and and strangers alike、uh, affirmed what was innately、uh, a desire、uh, of mine. And Jacob and I partnered together to chase chase after that. Okay, so you focus on the the, the product. So Jacob will focus on the, the marketing thing, right? Yes. Oh, cool. And、uh, you have uh, some uh, the recommendation about the pop up. The business, the rental is, is pretty expensive. So, oh, sure. The, yeah, I know the the, the first that they they want to start the the business like pop up. Right. Because it's really good for the 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 new business. Right. So, do you have any recommendation? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would start with a really great product、uh-huh. and a really great way to make、uh, that product consumable for other people. Whether you're specializing in. You know, a portable espresso machine or pour overs or aero presses, and then and then look to align、um, with other businesses that are like-minded,、mm-hmm. that、um, have a good inflow of customer traffic in、um, in areas of town that are are good for foot traffic,、mm-hmm. and then and then、uh, look to create some regular pop-ups. And use social media to. Yeah. So the next question is,、uh, I noticed that you are doing the coffee roasting in the in the shop. So what's the idea behind this on-site roasting? Yeah. It.、Uh, it at a base level is to connect the consumer with the process that happens、um, to make it consumable. Oh. So it's a tactile.、Uh, right now, we can hear the roaster running. You'll be able to smell the beans once they,、um, you know, they start to get into the middle of the roast process. There's scent at the end of it. You know, the customers that are in the shop get to interact with that, even if they're not actively engaging and watching it.、Uh, and that was something that we were really intent on doing was to uh, uh, kind of tie the things together. So the espresso that you're going to get right here. Is roasted right here,、yeah. right? So that's a that's a pretty way, a pretty neat way to connect、um, the and align the areas of the supply chain that we we can control from receiving it from a supplier and importer. You know, the the end of that is the bags are on the floor.、Mm-hmm. They go in here. You know, we can we do a little bit here to handle it, and then it and then it gets to go through the espresso machine. Okay. A couple days later. And also, it's easy for customer to know in the, about the specialty coffee. Yes, yeah. About the, yep. I saw the the table, the coffee machines.、Mm-hmm. So, do you think it's a, it's a good way to improve the in, interact in, interaction with the customers because it's a the low profile machine. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. It's um, we're um. We're so used to a machine that sits on the countertop. Where、uh, are you familiar with the the show Home Improvement? By removing a box that sits on the counter,、uh-huh. we're able to interact with the customer in、oh, yes. a, a much more face-to-face manner.、Uh-huh. Uh, it's it's an attractive piece that、um, lends itself to attention for the customer, and 
Um, but really by removing the box that was always between yes. the barista and the customer, you're enabling um, a cleaner interaction and ultimately uh, a better relationship, right? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, good. Yeah, we're good. All right, so last the question. Yeah, sure. So about coffee beans. Yeah. So what is the, the procedure to choose the, the right product? Yes. Yeah, yeah sure. This is great. That's a great. I yeah. love that question. I love all the questions, but that's a really great question. Yeah. We really love natural coffees. Okay. Uh, natural coffee meaning that they leave the the the, the fruit on the bean uh -huh. longer than say a washed coffee. Okay. And so natural coffees pick up more of the fruit tendencies. Um, so when we are looking to bring coffees in first we are looking for really interesting coffees um, that offer something that maybe um, uh, specialty coffee consumers uh, might be surprised at note wise we have a natural rwanda right now a natural zambia uh, some unique ethiopias we tend to highlight natural ethiopias um, and uh, so when I'm looking for beans, I'm looking for interesting coffees. Um, not that that's to say, you know, a really great cup of washed Colombia is yeah. unique, uh, but we tend to uh, favor the more wild coffees. So first and foremost, I'm looking for um, naturals and honey processed, and then. Um, uh, and I'm looking for naturals and honey process in locations that you're not typically seeing naturals. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's usually that's the first step in, in what I'm doing um, uh, when I look to bring in new green coffees. Um, and outside of that, the relationships that we've built with the companies that are importing uh, those beans, that's that's also um, that's like one A and one B. Um, is uh, continuing to cultivate the relationships with the people that are bringing in the coffees that are beautiful that we've been consuming. Makes yes. sense. Makes sense. So, you know, in, in China, a lot of birds that they try to use a lot of natural process, but mm -hmm. for customers, they, they feel they feel natural, like the real because it's, it's, too, it's an intensity yeah. acidity. Yeah. So how about here? The customer love natural flavor. We are. We've been. We have, we are moving to see, we're, we're moving to bring in even more naturals because uh -huh. people walk in asking for naturals. They don't walk in and ask for washed oh, coffees. Really? Oh, so a, we have, we have yes, yeah. we have a lot of, we have a lot of customers that come in and they ask for naturals, right? And wow. so these are the coffees that we love. These are the coffees that we feel, um, are most interesting on espresso. Yes, right? I tried that. Uh, yeah. Rwanda? The Rwanda one? Yeah. I, I tasted that. It's a, this is natural, but I feel it's clean, fruity. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's so impressive. Yeah, yeah. 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 right. It's kind of not exactly the, the, the regular natural, it's true, right. true fermentation flavor. Right. But that's why it's more clean, like right. half that natural, half more Right, yeah. yeah that's that's yeah. really nice. Yeah, I think we're seeing that based upon the the, ver the varietals and the countries that are doing them, uh -huh. right? Our, our, maybe our society perspective is that um, naturals aren't going to be as clean mm -hmm. of a cup or um, or as controllable they're going to be they're going to have naturally something that you don't want in a coffee yes. and i think that especially with how we're seeing the, um, other countries mm -hmm. develop more natural say panama and costa rica the, the zambia that we've had the rwanda that we've had um your, They're beautiful coffees and they don't have anything within them that you don't want. Cool. It's good all the way through, yeah. Yeah, thank you. So, so yeah, much. totally. Yeah. Thank you. Hey.